Welcome back to Left on Red, a Goal Out original podcast with me, Brenda Dinnehy. Well done, and me, Julie Haynes. I said I might introduce it because this is my old stomping ground where we're recording from today. Yeah, so we're in Red FM this morning for yeah. a change. Nice to be here in the real capital, isn't it? You're a bit nervous though in the studio. I'm very nervous. Yeah. I feel like I'm, I don't know, I feel a bit lost. It is. Like I haven't been, the last time I was in here was when I left and I was not sacked. Not this time, right? <laughs> so I think it's 19 months ago, so I haven't been in here since. Haven't so, you? No, yeah. I've been in here since, no. Um, but we were on with Neil there a few weeks ago and we're going in with Neil again after this for the chat. So yeah, it's uh, it's nice to be here. What's the story with you? How are you? Good, good. Come out the floods yesterday. I know. Jeez. We were actually meant to be here yesterday, but we had to cancel over, yeah, yeah, over the floods and stuff. Yeah, and all Man seriousness, now like lots of places destroyed, Eepers. so bad. See Middleton and I know Glanmire. Yeah. So and Joe, you know, I actually was listening to KC driving here this morning. Did you hear what he said? Sarsfields, you know Sarsfields, yeah. yeah. So they opened up all their gates and like left all the flood and water come in to like flood the pitches. So that way, then some of the houses and oh, businesses are saved in Glanmire. Yeah, I was really crying. Oh my God. The And they only wanted some cups. Yeah, there. and they're actually mad practicing or training or whatever. And they opened all the gates, all the flood gates, and all the water came flying in and flooded all their pitches. Their clubhouse gone, but that meant. Save some houses and businesses in Glenmire. Oh my God, they deserve. Where else would you get they that deserve, only car? They deserve the car yeah. person of I the know. year. Isn't that lovely, man? It's so Callan, if you're listening, they deserve the car person of the year. So so lovely. Oh so my lovely. God. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that nearly brought a tear to me. You know, this morning here oh, and that. Wow. Yeah, and seeing all the visuals, like the emergency services and normal yeah. people out, like you know, just I know. It was lovely. It was really lovely. But um, yeah, so we're here. We're in Cork, and um, it's been a crazy week. How are you? I'm not too bad. I think my week wasn't too bad, was it? Oh well, look. I my longest run done 20 miles alright I'm going to get it out of the way you said on your stories though you weren't going to do 20 miles I said I was going to do well I was ill week, the week before uh, Yeah. so I was like I'll do 16 to 18 so I ran to Windsor Castle Yeah. which is where the Queen and all them lay like they're dead like oh is that where they're buried yeah sorry they're buried there in Windsor yeah. Castle all so I was like Queenie's <laughs> inside there now with Philip and the gang so I ran from my gaff to Windsor and I got the train back so oh, it was lovely because I'd never been to Windsor and yeah. throughout my whole training I've always ran to an iconic landmark. Yeah. And I was like, do you know what? It's nearly like, like a treat at the end of yeah, the run. Yeah, like yeah, I'm yeah. passing Buckingham Palace for my runs like it's Kinsale Road roundabout. No, it's like, oh, Buckingham Palace there now because it's so weird that I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, that's there now because yeah. I'm only two miles from it so that was always my running route. So I saw that, finished that and then the countdown to NYC but listen, I'm not joking, you're right. I am actually not going to go on my stories when I'm in New York. I'm going to take a break. Are you? Yeah, I'm just not going to bother because I've been harping on about it. Do you know, Eileen, you know so you're just gonna I'm just not gonna talk I'm just not gonna even go post here. a no. picture of I might I'll see. Or I'll see yeah, I'll see yeah, you're good at stuff with that you're I know, to charge you know the phone what I've off do you know I'm just gonna keep myself private there now for a while <laughs> <laughs> like okay do you wanna leave the <laughs> building will I just take <laughs> off on my own do you know what I suppose I have mentioned it a bit too much so I might just kind of you know back away from it now what the running yeah no like I said I'm not gonna be posting too much about it the running? Yeah, on New York. Oh, yeah. Do you know the way? Because I have been non-stop about it, you know? Oh, I know that. Yeah, you I know, know listen, that. you've your dancing coming up as well. I know you've been banging was... on about that a good bit as well. Oh, sure, I'm hell for leather uh, last no, week No, but in so. fairness, you have been practising fairly well. Yeah, I'm... <laughs> You're taking this serious. Ah, uh, but come on now, I can't go up on the stage and not know my moves. I, but like, I didn't know there was such a competitive side to you. Yeah, there no, is. No, there is though. At the start, I couldn't give a shit, but now, as it's like, you know, it's really close now, I'm yeah. getting nervous and I'm like, fuck it, I have to start like practicing. You're here. actually going to be unreal. Oh, no, sure, I'm taking a week off already. I come back on the Friday, the show is on the Thursday. Oh, yes, yeah, so you're going to Spain? Yeah, I'm going away today. Oh, After God, this, God, talk I'm about driving timing. straight to the airport. I'm gone for eight days, so I'll have no practicing done unless I dance around the swimming pool. Yeah, nothing. But wouldn't there be kind of like little dancing things in the hotels? You go into an all exclusive. Yeah, like a kiddie thing. Ones, the kind of well, the kiddie one. <laughs> I'll be in the kiddie the kind club. Of, Come on, you guys. know the like the pensioner one at the night time. Is what they're a good laugh though. Oh, they're my favourite. Yeah, they're my. Favorite. You'll be there. No, I was going to say, but pa- Pablo, not Paolo. Paolo is my fella. You'll be going around with Pablo. Yeah, doing the Charleston with Pablo over. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Pity now you can't come because I they know. asked you to judge. I know, like, but sure, next time. Yeah, I won't be fucking dancing. Like, you wouldn't know. You could get into it. No, you could be a judge for the next one. You could be a Nancy with the stars next year. Who knows? 
Oh, remember I judged that and you, you, did, you yeah. fucker, took a screenshot, the ugliest screenshot of me. Oh, I don't I don't think that was that's our group chat picture yet. That's our not group chat that. picture, yes. <laughs> Brenda, the great friend she is, took the uh, ugliest picture of me. <laughs> and we have a group chat myself, herself, another Miriam now and who else? Tara, Christine, Christine, Christine Tara, the few yeah. of us anyway in the group chat. And that's the picture. Yeah. That's the group chat picture yeah, of me. It's, we need to change it. We'll we need to change, we'll get a good one of you and we'll put it on. All of us? Well, yeah, I suppose all of us should be in it, all right, yeah. Can't go around yeah, so yeah, like... that's it. Uh, and speaking of Polo Pablo's, people were asking because I'm gone very low key about Polo. He's still doing the rounds. Okay. We're still texting, and he's going to come over and see me in November when I'm back from America and all that kind of stuff. Back yeah, from your holiday. Back from the holidays. Yeah, just going away from America for a few days. That's all. So yeah, and then what else did you get up to? Um, so I was actually did I tell you all that I went to Juice Lister during the week? Oh my, well, is well, it, hold on, is it did... over the car parking thing that you got mm. your teeth done? <laughs> Fuck. What's the latest in that? I heard nothing. I'd say there's a summons out for my arrest. I'll go to Cork you know, Airport later and there'll be a shutdown. <laughs> do you know, actually, no. Do you know the way you... Do you know the email you sent me that you sent to the Cork going, hi, I want to be around? <laughs> yeah. Did you actually send that? Yeah, is that That's all right? <laughs> I sent it to you to have a look and make I, sure it's I was okay. Like, she's pulling the piss for that. No, did I spell everything okay? No, I think it was all right. Because it bounced back. I spelled the email wrong. And I rang them again. I was like, hey, remember remember yeah, me? Yeah, I can't yeah. make the courts there next Wednesday. She's like, yeah. And I was like, come here, the email is wrong. It keeps bouncing back. So she gave me the email again. They sent it and I heard nothing back. Oh, I got no reply or not. No day like, for the new court, no? No. You'll be grand, I'd say. You'll I'll be, be grand. grand. Like, yeah. I get to Cork Airport now. It'll be fucking carnage. But yeah, no, I went to the solicitor because just family. Like with my own, like with my kids and stuff like that. Um, I just have to get things down on paper and just for my own set. Like I do. I went to court. Like this is my first time in court. Over this, I went to court already before about it, and I'm just heartbroken now that I have to go back through the courts just for somebody to pull up the socks. Do you know that kind of yeah. way? It's hard. Like it's really, really hard. But I have to do it for myself and the twins. So yeah, it's gonna be. I'll have a bit of a battle on my hands, I think. But yeah, I'm just heartbroken that I've to go back through the courts. And what do you think was kind of like the thing that kind of you were like, I have to sort this. We're not he's not even I don't know what the situation was, but the communication must have been not there. What was it that you were like, oh, I have to go to court now? You see it's very hard for us to chat as well because obviously he's on the other side of the world. Yeah. You no, know, he's a new life out there. Like he's, you know, whatever, he's just doing his own thing. I'm here with the twins all the time and I suppose if we were to message, it's like eight hours in the delay and it's very, very hard to communicate. So I'm like, you know, and then when we do, there was always arguments. So I'm like, you know what, we're just going to have to go through solicitors here. So that's what I did. I went back to my solicitor during the week and I went in there okay ish And then once I sat down with him, it's nearly like a counselling session in there. So he's like, okay, tell me everything and I have to open up to him and I just broke down crying. He's like, why is my life this? Do you know, like I have friends there that are going to sisters, I'm my brother, because he's at my house. Do you know the way now they'd be like signing stuff and whatever and like they'd be going, if they're getting married, do you need a sister if you get married? No, I don't think you do need a sister. <laughs> well, I don't know, come here, I'm not wearing a wig here at all like a barrister or anything like, you know, barrister Brenda here. I don't think you do. Well, if you're getting divorced, you do obviously. Yeah, all right. So like, I'm like, all my friends and there's something, Sean sure now, like buying a house, marrying, whatever, and here I am now going into a sister for for court dates. And I suppose for the listeners and stuff like that who obviously they all listen but for people who mightn't have known you from the start like I suppose you've been looking after the twins pretty much they're six now you've been looking after the twins pretty much for the last six years on your own. Yeah I did yeah yeah yeah. So like I came back from Australia pregnant I was about six months pregnant and the only reason I came back is because my dad was basically was diagnosed with stage four cancer. So I want to be home, come home to be with my family and stuff and be there for my dad. So in fairness, the twins' dad was very good. Like he was really understanding. He was like, Julie, go home, be with your family, whatever. And he stayed out in Australia working because he had a really, really good job. So he came home for the birth of the twins. And then the plan was, because my dad was doing well with treatment and stuff, that myself and the twins and the twins' dad were all to move back out to Australia. But like with Australia, like you need a lot of visas and stuff like that. So we, I suppose we've nearly poured about 10 grand into our visas for the four of us. And there was a big feck up like, oh, just I can't even get into that now today. And it was a big feck up with the visa. So we were trying to sort it from our side, like from Ireland as we were here. And their dad sorted his own visa. He went out and myself and the twins then were left here. 
Oh, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, it was. It was very bad, especially with my dad being so sick and like, it's just, it was a struggle. And then trying to get a house. Like I couldn't get a house because I wasn't working. So it was just me. I had two babies, only what, nine months old, 10 months old. So I found it hard then to get a house because the landlords were like, oh, and are you working? I'm like, no. Do you have a partner? No, I'm on my own with two kids. And sure, like, I was put back to the, yeah, the list. Like, last you know? the list yeah. I found that very hard. Eventually, anyway, I got a house. I'm done in Carrick now ever since. But, um, and I'm loving it. But being a single parent is the hardest fucking job in the world because I'm playing mommy and daddy, like, do you yeah. know? Um, he didn't see them then in four years because of COVID and stuff. And he was out in Australia. So he did come back last year and he reached out to me. So he said, look, Julie, do you mind if I call down to see the kids? And I was like, look, you're not coming into the house, but I'll meet you in Fora. But I said, only if I introduce you as mommy's friend from Australia, I cannot introduce you as daddy because you haven't been around for the last four years. My dad, their granddad, played daddy to them. My own dad only had passed away the year before. And I didn't want to confuse them either, you know. So we met in Fora and they were grand. So I just introduced them as mommy's friend. I thought they might be some bit of a connection mm. there like oh my god they're going to know him straight away do you know but not nothing do you think then if there was a connection and they knew it do you think in any kind of way that may have hurt you as in they're all about this man now who's practically a stranger and I'm their mother do you think anything like that would have or would you have loved if there was a connection if they I kind think of I would have loved it yeah because I so, so I loved my dad so much and I wanted that for them as well now I did say to him down a photo I was like look I've no problem introducing you as daddy but you have to move home to Ireland and you have to start playing a bigger role in their lives. And I said, then down the line, we'll sit them down and be like, look, your daddy was away for the last couple of years working, whatever. He's home now. This is daddy or whatever. Do you know, I just didn't want to say, go straight in. This is a strange man. You didn't see him in four years, but it's your daddy. And actually, he's actually leaving again next week. We don't know when we'll see him again. So yeah, so you haven't seen him since. And have the twins, obviously, they're unaware. But do you know the way, with the ever asked, who's my dad or where's my dad? You know, when they see other people's dads, do they, yeah. or is it just they only know that it's you? Have they ever asked Not anything? Not yet, like? really. Um, Like, they do religion every Thursday as their homework. And two or three weeks ago, they had to draw a picture of their family. And Fionn um, drew myself, my mum, Sean, and Granda, my dad, uh, who was in heaven with angel wings. Aww. And, like, he looks at him as a dad. Yeah. So he knows no better. And Sean, Sean is a great role model as well. Yeah. My brother, like, you know. So um yeah, he's he had my dad and my brother. And then me, I always say, I'm mommy and daddy anyways, you know? Yeah. But um yes, that was me now this week. So yeah, it's just it's hard. It's really, really hard. Because one minute you're so in love with him and like you're creating this perfect life. And the next minute you're like you've boxing gloves on ready to go into a courtroom. And did you ever feel, you know, when he was going back to Australia and all that, did you ever kind of feel that, oh, we will be the perfect family again? Or do you ever still hold out hope or anything like that? Not now, but at the start, yeah. Yeah. Because I just wanted that perfect family. I wanted mommy, daddy, two kids, beautiful house, nice car outside the door. No. And what do you think overall is the hardest thing about being a single mom? For you, like I suppose the last couple of years, what has been? Well, especially now since Fionn got into sport and stuff like that, like he loves soccer, he loves rugby and like I'd be trying to sit down and then watching the rugby match now the last couple of weeks. And I'm like, come on, we got pizza now, me and you, Fionn, and I'd give you a glass of Coke or something, you know, like as a treat. And he's weak for himself and like he's like, why are they doing that now, mom? I'm like, like sports now, just buy things, especially for Fionn. I feel... I feel like he's losing out a big bit. Now, I know he has my brother, but my brother works full time. He has his own job. He has his own life and stuff. But um, things like that, I, I'm i starting to struggle. And would you say there's a lot of other like girls you're friends with or know of that are going through the similar, same similar Yeah, a kind lot of, stuff. of my friends. A lot of my friends. But then you see, with them, I feel like their kid's dad is still in their lives, even though he could be fucking bollocks, whatever. But like, he might take him away on a Wednesday afternoon or a Saturday night or whatever. There is, you know, that he's still involved in their lives even though it might be only once, twice a week, like I'm a 100% single parent. But I also actually during the week put out my Instagram, you know, share stories with us as well for this episode. So I got loads of DMs and emails. So I'm going to read out the first one here. It reads, Hi girls, I'm personally not going through this, but I wanted to give the perspective of a child as I went through it with my dad. I'm 21 now. My mom and dad split up because he was such a big gambler and spent his week's wages in the bookies and in the pub. Even though he would have been on good money, he never gave a penny to me or to my mom for me when they split up. I wouldn't have even noticed except I had to go to court with her one time to get him to pay I think it was 40 euro a week which was feck all I'd cry myself to sleep most nights wondering why does he not want to support me or why does he not want his own daughter 
My mom kept nothing from me as a teenager. So I grew up to see him who he really is. And I'm grateful she did this. A few years later, I'm now 21 and nothing has changed. He's still a selfish prick. But to anyone else going through this, just know it does get better one day when you realise they are not worth the stress. I have another one here. This topic is so close to my heart. I'm separated over seven years now from my ex-husband and we are divorced two years. He had a three-month affair while our baby was only 18 months and our eldest was six. We do not speak now, but he still takes the kids on weekends and says, this is the life I chose. Because I didn't take him back, I chose my kids to be brought up in a broken family. I finally met someone new now and happy after six years alone and my ex is still going on like he has a say in my life. He calls my new partner my babysitter and I know is bad mouthing him to the kids. It's so frustrating that he was the one who betrayed our marriage, but I'm still the one suffering. Yeah, that's awful now that she thinks that the daddy is bad mountain the new boyfriend or the new partner. Terrible. And that goes on, doesn't that it? That goes on. I, that's one thing I wouldn't do as much as you'd want to fucking no. do it. Like, and you haven't? To, I haven't, no, no. I'd have to bite my tongue. Yeah. Like, as far as I know, like, your man is in a relationship, okay? like, whatever, but like, I would never bad mountain. It's not going to do with her. Do you know, or if I got a new fella or a new partner, it's not got to do with him. And I think being really rude, calling her new partner the babysitter. Babysitter. Petty. Petty, he's just jealous. Yeah. Je- jealous. 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 Your nails. <laughs> jealous. He's just shellac. <laughs> shellac. Uh, we have another one here. I have a two-year-old girl with my ex. He took me to court earlier this year looking for full custody of her. The whole experience was so mentally draining with solicitors, letters over and back for weeks before the actual court date. He had his parents there making all the calls for him. The court granted him overnight and midweek visits and as I left the courtroom, his parents laughed into my face saying, ha ha, who won now? And that wasn't enough as I'm currently in a battle with him as to what play school to send her to. It's never ending and I'm absolutely drained. Do you ever think that, this is just me, I'd be thinking of this for other single parents, do you ever think that the man does it on purpose, the custody battle, and doesn't necessarily even want the children, but, you know, I'll drive her mad there now? Yeah. Or is it vice versa even? Do you yeah, think the people do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, no, uh, they tried to play that card as well the last time I was in court, and the judge in fairness just laughed and was like, how? Like, how? Yeah. Like, seriously, how? So that was squashed straight away, but, like, I do think so, yeah. Yeah. Hi girls, my own child is 14 now. When she was two, her dad stopped seeing her. He would constantly cancel when he arranged to take her. And if I had planned nights out, he purposely wouldn't show. He didn't pay maintenance and we were in and out of court constantly. But all that would happen is he'd pay a contribution, then forget about it again. I eventually stopped applying as I felt like I was begging him for money and I ended up working 60 hour weeks to pay the bills. Mentally, it destroyed me and I see my daughter now being affected by it. She wonders why he doesn't want her. She's missing the core piece in her life. Men who do this have no idea what long term effects they have on people all to save him 60 euro a week and spend time with his daughter. That's powerful, isn't it? Yeah, like 60 euro. 60 Do you be that euro. Yeah. The trouble as well that I hear some women going to about getting it like 100 euros a week or something or whatever it is, or 60 euros. The trouble, the, the trouble. trouble. Oh my God. Because in some cases it's been paid into the mum's bank account. So if it doesn't go in on the Friday, you have to text them then and you're literally begging for a fucking 50 oh scabby gosh. fucking euro. That wouldn't get you far when you have kids. No, it wouldn't. You know, and that's actually a thing that I'm struggling with at the moment is, um, I suppose, the costs. Mm. Because like... I have to get absolutely everything for Fionn and Aaron Rose pay all their activities. Like my John Storrs bill every week is the bones of 200 euro. His soccer boots is 60 euro. Her activities, like her month for Tara is 160 euro term per activity and same with Fionn's. Their swimming is oh, 160 euro for two. That, like, it's so expensive and 50 euro a week. And your one income then and you're, and you're self-employed then so you're never exactly sure what you're going to be getting I, Exactly, that's my every month. Like that's why I lose sleep of is yeah. because of, and you know the way like some of my friends now who'd be married or in a relationship whatever like I know one girl in particular like she lost her job there a couple of weeks ago but she's falling back on him now he's able to support her and the kids till she gets sorted again like if social media ever goes for me or the podcast I'm gone yeah. I have nothing don't yeah. have a cent yeah. not a fucking cent and I have to put a roof over myself and the twinnies head and feed us and I have nobody to just support us mm. so yeah that's 
that's one thing that I'm struggling with as well at the moment. Um, Hi, Julie and Brenda. I had a baby with a man who suffered addiction issues, which didn't fully come too late until I was pregnant as he was great at hiding it. I was often left alone with the baby as he went on a bender and eventually it came to a point where he got some help, but not enough to deal with the underlying reasons for addiction. I'm now pregnant with baby number two and I've left him as he's still angry, childish and emotionally manipulative. Manipulative? Is that word? Manipulative. Yeah, at times. His family have buried their head in the sand about him. I find myself romanticising the good times and what could have been, even though he hasn't a penny to his name. No ambition in life and everything we had was through my hard-earned money. I'm terrified of bringing him to court in case he gets more access than he deserves. He wouldn't be able to mind the older one, let alone the newborn once it comes. I don't know what to do, where to start, and I feel so very alone in my own head, even though I have a super supportive family of my own around me. I Now, I have a level of empathy there because of the addiction thing. Yeah. Because, like, addiction is an awful illness and... He obviously, like, it's happened to him, you know, he didn't ask for it. So with that, I've kind of a certain amount of empathy. But of course, I have fierce um, empathy for her as well. It's an awful situation to be in. Yeah, the two of them, it's really hard in two of them. And like, what, what stood out there to me was, I find myself mm. romanticising the good times and what could have been. I do that all the time as well. Like, if I'm doing a photo or like somewhere now where there's a lot of families, I'm looking at them yeah. like, oh God, that could have been me. And then have you have there yeah. ever a picture of the four of you or anything? Have yeah. you any? You have a picture of the four yeah. of you when they're small, like um, newborns. Do you have it somewhere? Is it something that you hide that you you've put away, or is it somewhere? Is it in your phone? Who you doing framed or anything like that? No, no. But when I was pregnant, I actually went to Thailand. Yeah. with the baby daddy, like. And when we were out there, we got a load of pictures. And I actually still have the pictures on my phone. And Fiona and Aaron's new thing now. They love going through my camera yeah. roll. And when we met him that time last year, <gasps> see, I was pregnant in Thailand and I used always showed my twins, like, do you know when I was over there? Yeah, 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 yeah. mommy's telling me, whatever. So when we were in photo last year, John whispered into my ear, that's the man that was in the pictures when we were in your belly. Oh, my I don't know what to say. Yeah. That, no, yeah. That's the man that was there when we were in your belly. Should God love him. Like, oh, God. Yeah, I know. And do you ever look back at the pictures of you together? And like that romanticise about it go like would you ever look at it that way do you ever like do you know the way sometimes we might scroll back to something or go back and you'll be reminiscing over something does that ever happen to you as in like what that's what could have been yeah yeah yeah. and I think I think a lot of us do that yeah like Jesus should have would have could have like yeah. what, what would have my life yes. be like now do you know what would be so different yeah, yeah but then I bet in a way I don't know but I would guess that the way you are now and like what the amazing mother you are and how you've turned your life around and everything I don't think you'd want to be anyone else but who you are now. Yeah, exactly. Do you know? Yeah. So, I, I know. But I think everyone does that. Like, everyone does it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, hi girls, I'm only 20 but when Julie was speaking about courts it brought me back to a case I'm currently going through. At just 16 I stayed at my dad's house as my mum and dad were separated. He secretly recorded me in the shower. Four years later I am still awaiting a court date for him as it's been adjourned multiple times. He thinks he's gotten away with it because it's been so long and has now decided to put my mom through hell trying to get access to my 10 year old sister who he hasn't seen in four years. It's horrible seeing my mom go through this and the pressure that can be put on women trying to protect their kids. Anything through the courts nowadays takes so long and the mental pressure of it all is so hard. God, that's kind of disturbing, isn't it? Yeah. Upsetting yeah. more than anything. That's frightening. Isn't it? Jeepers. Hi girls, I met a fellow when I was 13, he was 21. We planned a child when I was 16, had a wee girl, he adored her. Then we had a babysitter who was younger than me. He ended up cheating on me with her and my sister and many others. We broke up when my daughter was four. He always brought my daughter the big presents but gave no maintenance. He ended up with the babysitter and married her. When my daughter was nine, I brought him to court for maintenance. He never paid. We were in court every couple of months until my daughter was 23. On her 19th birthday, he sent her a card to my amazing daughter, love, dad. Blah, 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 and money in it. The day after, my sister rang me to say he wanted a DNA test. Oh my God, sorry, <laughs> no, what a break. <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, like, sending oh, the my. child 
I love you, love you so much, daddy. And then the next day, sending your one. Like what? Go, walking into sisters, I want a DNA test. But you know what? That is that's wreck her head. Yeah, yeah. I mentioned you. I remember when we used to do these uh, topics on deadbeat dads. No, yeah. listen, women aren't always innocent either. Yeah. We used to get lots of calls for that as well. And we'd spend the three hours doing it on the show. Yeah. Call after call after call after call. But then again, you'd have other days where it was the other way around as well, just for balance. Yeah. But yeah, there were so many of them. Oh, that's frightening, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Yeah, but it's nice to know that we're not alone. You're and certainly not alone yeah, anyway. Yeah, like all those meshes there. Because I think when you're going through anything, any sort of journey in life, you're like, Jesus, why is this happening yeah. to me? Am I the only person in the world that this is happening yes. to? Yes. And then you reach out or you, you know, and you get all these emails and it's lovely to know that you're not alone and there's so many other women going through it and men going through um this battle. And do you know when you might be getting a court date? Have you any idea? Yeah, but yes. Okay, have a date. Yeah. And how do you feel about it? I'm, I'm all right. I'm ready for it. Like, is it near or far away? Very soon. And has he got notice of it? Yeah. And there's been no contact or anything? No. See, that, do you know the way my head is now? Yeah. I'd be awful bad for something like that. I'd be like, geez, I'm going to talk to him there now, even though you can't. I know, yeah. But I would, I'd be kind of like, listen, there's a court date coming there now for you or whatever, just to yeah. clear the air kind of a yeah. thing. But I'd be... But it's not like I have to go face face with him. I know you don't. I know how this is going to fuck... It's, it's, I see, know. That, it's very confusing. That's it. No, it's, well, it's different countries. It's different countries and different laws and different countries. And it's like, how do we do this? Okay, and from there, so we'll just go into our ick section. So every week on the podcast, we call out some icks. My ick of the week is... Hold on, no. Uh, You're looking at me and I always think this is something I've done. No. All right, okay. <laughs> you have to throw me <laughs> off. <laughs> oh, fuck no. What's your ick? My ick, right, is when people have loads of money, but they're really stingy. Absolutely disgusting. Yeah. When they have loads of money, it actually, oh my Lord, they might be a millionaire. And the stinginess. And I know people say, that's how they have it. That's how they have it. Yeah. But when they're really, really stingy, I, I just can't deal with it. I just, I hear people who are, I'm not joking, you know, and like you might be on Instagram, like multimillionaires. And then they're like, oh, I'm not paying for like, we'll say a Ryanair coffee. I know it's yeah. kind of this for the sake of it. That really, really bugs me. Really bugs me. Yeah, that's yeah. actually a good one, actually. I, that I... really, I just can't bear it. Yeah, I know. And the smell of fake tan. Oh yeah, that's, that's oh, off yeah. you. That's, that, that's actually my ick, the smell. Make, I was getting spray tan every week when I was at home in Ireland with Audrey. Smell it's not off that bad. me it's at like the moment. biscuits. Yeah. But you look lovely in mahogany over in Spain. Over. And you know, I think with tan as well, it nearly shreds five pounds. Oh, it does. I shreds think, ten pounds. Yeah, it's unreal, isn't it? That was my ick, the smell. Because yeah. I'm actually marinating hair and tan. Yeah, you look sure good. You're, you're looking nice and toasty there now. You're glowing, glowing yeah. Glowing. Yeah. But she emailed in year X and her first one... Bella, who says howdy? I know Sean said it on the pod, but sorry. Yeah. Oh my god, poor Sean! Yeah, that's actually is a nick. Howdy. What I, think I could put that in my stories last night about something. I did think you? I did. Howdy. Yeah. yeah. I don't usually do that, but there's a fellow you text him for. He'd be like howdy, and he used to always do the cowboy hat emoji as well. I'm not too bad over that. Uh, it might be sexy, right? If... Nah, no, that's a wrap. No, it's different. Nah, well, nah. I have another one here. I'm going to say this one. Influencers constantly say, obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think we do have a pattern of saying obsessed, literally. Well, we all say literally, low, way too much. Yeah. I'm literally, so I literally, this happened. Yeah. Literally now. Yeah. Literally. And I don't think we understand the actual current yeah. meaning behind literally. Like, yeah. I literally now. Literally is everything. Liter- oh, literally. Literally. Yes, literally. And then as well, obsessed. I'm obsessed. I'm a, yeah, when you are trying to plug something, all right, you're kind of, I'm obsessed with this chain now. Yeah, I I'm know. obsessed with this. Obsessed. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a good old word though, it is, yeah, it? we like it. Think of a new word now. Yeah. The noise that somebody makes when they're sucking on a vape. I had someone noise on the phone some last night and I could hear them doing it and I didn't mind it. Because we love people that smoke. Yeah, but I remember when I used to be on the phone to my mother and I was gone off the fags and then I'd be... I'd, I'd have to put the phone yeah, away yeah. gone from me and yeah. I'm like I'm like I know girl yeah, I know I know, know. Yeah. she'd be like what's that what's there now like... she that one there is like detective <laughs> yeah. like detective do you know there's another one here I'm sorry no right but I get this one and I just have to comment right people in relationships calling each other baby right but something that gives me the ick I don't know what I say because people might go mad come on sir mom and dad's night out Oh God, I don't. I know. think I did that at the start. No. It was a novelty because I'm mommy, but no, mom I wouldn't. and dad gone on holidays. Yeah, no, no, no. Do you know I what I mean? That, yeah, but anyway, yeah. I'm rambling. Go on, guys. Grunting in the gym. I'm there too, and I'm not grunting. I suppose that's when they're lifting mm. weights and stuff. That's when they're lifting weights. Yeah. You know my fella that I'm dancing with. He has to lift me twice. Oh God, we're doing two or three lifts, 
and I could see he's struggling, you know. And I said to him yesterday when he was lifting me, <laughs> "Come goes, on, if you pull that fucking face when you're lifting me on the stage, <laughs> everyone is gonna know I'm heavy. You're fucking dead." He's like, "I'm not doing anything." I was like, "I could see you're struggling, trying to lift me over your head." Oh my gosh! But uh, I was like, "Pull, like smile, just yeah. fucking smile as if this is we're gliding, like yeah. and like I'm so light and like I'm a, like light as a feather, like." That fucking face, you're actually blue. Like, Johnny yeah, yeah, of yeah. Jansen, just I'm sure Johnny. he stops breathing and everything when he's lifting me. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I pulled him yesterday. I was like, you make that face on that stage, boy. You're dead. Are they going to video the whole thing? I know I'll get, I'll get to see it on people's stories, but will there be a video for the night? Yeah, be interesting and then we're going back to Maybelline, who are our main sponsors after like a couple of weeks, all the dancers, and we're able to sit down and they're going to show oh, us amazing. on the big huge screens. Yeah, oh, yeah. they did that as well as the one I did in the Glen. Oh, did they? We had a so, ball. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to that yeah, night. Yeah, that's going to be a day. And you make great friends out of it, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. The best of friends. One final one here now is... When a person's teeth clack together while eating, how hard are you chewing? Someone says. Gosh. Yeah, that that would be a bit of a nick Irish. Yeah. Yeah. So that is our ick of the week and our last final bit for this week's podcast, as it is Halloween tomorrow. Do you like Halloween? Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind it either. Yeah, it's grand. Grand. I remember. Do you ever do the Ouija board or anything? Did we do it that time? Oh, we, we did it with Tramble, yourself, yeah. no? No. We d- I did do the thing as light as a feather as weak as a board and over at my friend's house and they put, you know, you put your fingers under them and you raise them up like The Luigi Jesus. board? Not the Ouija board, it was this thing as light as a feather as weak as a board across Oh the- yeah, I remember that. And thing, then yeah. they were like, I'm moving, I'm yeah, moving. I know, I know. <laughs> like you're not. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Pure clowns. But anyway, this one is going to be a Halloween themed special for you, all right? Okay. So what country is Transylvania in? Um... Russia. No. What's the game? Uh? I'm not going to say. Julie, you're only meant to get one guess. Oh, the hotel. There's a hotel there. Hotel of Transylvania. That's a movie, isn't it? Is that it? Come on. <laughs> Where is it? Portugal. No, Romania. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fuck Spell. It's one of the most famous scary films ever made. And like, if you're told watch it at times, like, shit happens to you. Of course, I did watch it. But anyway, um, the mother told me not to, but I did watch it. Spell exorcist. E X C O R I S T. No. E X C O R X R I S T. E X O R C I S T. Exorcist. I would have got it. I put. The oh, C in. come here. Go away. X R E X R. Spell common sense. Just C- as it. C O M M O N S. Grand, because you said C O M M E N on your stories there last week. Yeah, yeah, you did. Right, okay, so another famous witchy story. Name one of the witches of Eastwick. What the fuck are they? They were these dissatisfied women living in a small town in Eastwick in New England in America. Sabrina. It's famous. No, it was Alexandra Jane Arsuki. Okay, I got two more now for you. Okay, I like this one. You've gotten zero to three so far. It's an Irish tradition that for Halloween you eat barn brack. What does it mean if you find the ring in it? You're going to meet a fella? You're going to get married? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know that one, all right? And then our final one. Before we started carving pumpkins, what did they use? To carve? Yeah. Apples? No, go on. Watermelon? <laughs> <laughs> Turnips. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come here, did you hear about the vegetable man's funeral? Oh. There's a big turn up in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only joke I know. Ah. I swear to, I should be at the Fringe Edinburgh Festival. That's the only joke I know oh, that I just that get was cracked. <laughs> that was shocking. Oh my, God. oh my God, it's all before we go. The 6th of January. Lads, if you plan 6th of January, unplan them. Cancel them because we've got a show. Yeah, Women's Little Christmas, baby. We and if for anyone who's not from Cork, Women's Little Christmas, Little Women's Christmas, they say here, it's like it's not like Naman, it's the last night of Christmas. And it was traditionally, I believe, that the women were tearing around all of Christmas doing this, that, and the other. And it was their night out. So it's going to be a girls' night out. Men, you can come too. What's going to be there, Julie? What are we going to be doing at it? Is it a secret? Are we allowed to announce it yet? When are tickets on sale? Well, let's just say we'll be dressed, but there'll be other people on the stage with us with no clothes on. Is that why you're putting the aubergines on your stories? You're obsessed with the aubergines. I'm obsessed. That's my number one emoji at the moment. That's all people are saying to me. Like, what's the story with Julie and the aubergine? (laughs) What's the story with Julie? Is that even her Julie and the twins? What's the story with Julie and the aubergine? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we can't wait. It's going to be a who. Tickets are actually on sale now. You'll be able to get them on... Eventbrite. Eventbrite. So if you just put in Brenda and Julie's Little Women's Christmas, it'll come up. Yeah, perfect. So till next time. Thank you. Ciao, bye. bye.